Good morning, Lean Agile London. Good morning, all of you. I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hope you have enough coffee, tea this morning. And we will not do work, even though we will explore how to work from anywhere and how to work anytime. So let's go on this journey together. As Jose said, I'm just back from a holiday. Um, and in the last year, uh, after we uh, regained our freedoms and are regaining our freedoms incrementally, I have been experimenting with more location and uh, time flexibility and how to not fit life around work, but fit work around my life. So if this resonates with you, you are in the right place. So there is a very interesting study uh, which says 79% of us employees, uh, based on a 10,000 person sample, are after location freedom, location flexibility, where we work from. Uh, it's quite a lot, I believe, but uh, this study um, continues and is done in waves and there will be more. We all imagine that when we are free to work from anywhere, we might be working from the beach. Perhaps we have even tried this. I have been uh, in UK beaches last summer, but unfortunately what happens to many of us is that we often end up doing various yoga poses <laughs> attached to the computer. And we might be spending still a lot of time on calls or various meetings. So we should not stop at location flexibility. We can go more and beyond. And if this resonates with you, then you might have also already heard about various terms of fatigue caused by video calls. And you have uh, had uh, maybe even physical symptoms. And this is a serious issue as we continue to work flexibly and remotely. So take good care of yourself. Harvard Business Review has a study uh, which has shown that we live in an era of collaboration overload. And this is very important for us in the Agile community because we emphasize individuals and interactions a lot. So personally, I think we should revisit this balance of how much we collaborate and how much we actually work more independently in our own time. So read this study if you are interested, I will share the links. But more interestingly, this is a personal story. And I would like to just inspire you here. Uh, the time is limited to give you some gifts or thoughts around how you could fit work around your life and prioritize your life. So yes, I have a professional persona, um, but I also love hiking. I love being with my family. I'm an auntie since two years. And uh, yeah, the vacations, very important to take breaks in this new uh, era of remote working. So let's explore what could be a better way. So here is one pointer. In the recent Zoom um, uh, uh, pie study, uh, Zoom, Slack, and, and the Consortium of Organizations, BCG, and a few others do this pie survey, uh, they found that in February this year, 94% of us want more schedule flexibility as well. So it's not enough to be on the beach. We also need to be able to do things there if we are in scenic locations or if we are around our family or caring for uh, relatives, um, it's very important to have more control about our schedule. Um, and I'm roughly halfway there. So let's explore this. I would like to invite you to turn to a person around you. We are roughly two, two or threes uh, around the table, so roughly five at the table. So turn to a person and discuss for a minute. What would more schedule flexibility bring to you, to your life? Yeah, I think that's 
Okay, let's come together. It's early morning, so I forgot to mention it's about benefits. <laughs> so there will be risks with schedule flexibility. Let's do some shout outs from tables. Just raise your hand and shout out some benefits you picked up. Anyone? Safe driving time to the company. That's great as well. That's great. Thank you. Safe uh, driving time yeah. to the company, peaceful, safe time, not in the biggest traffic jam. A bit more thinking space. A bit more thinking space. Thank you. The freedom to set your own hours to start when you want to end when you want. Mm -hmm. Set your own hours, perhaps to personalize to your needs or even biorhythms. Thank you, Ezra. Thank you. And we could continue. Um, what we have found, and, and scientists at NASA have uh, a mental health uh, score. Uh, they measure the, the stress levels of uh, employees. And with this score, they have found that by giving people just a few hours per day of focus time, uninterrupted, flexible schedules, where they choose what they do and how they want to spend time, even perhaps take a rest or drive, uh, the score can be significantly reduced just by one or two hours of you being in control of your schedule. So um, I invite us to then uh, think about meetings because meetings is one of the primary uh, time eaters or time wasters in some organizations. And if we rethink meetings as a process of interactions that starts way before the meeting is even needed, and there is a conscious decision, do we need real-time interaction for that? And conscious planning of the outcomes that we would like to achieve. So meetings are interactions intended to ach achieve a very specific outcome. And if we think about meetings as a process, then perhaps uh, we can then check each of you individually, think about how many hours per day do you spend on an average day at work with online meetings, so real-time video or audio meetings, and just mark that number in your head. There's no good or bad answer, that's the starting point. Managers will have more meetings. Depends on your role as well and company culture, and then the ambition would be to then divide this number by two. So that's your chance <laughs> to think about ways through this talk and later today and throughout the week in conversation how we could have this number. So the clicker is a bit fast. Let's look at some outcomes we might want to achieve when meeting. Here are some examples. And I invite you now to go through this list in your own time and think about which of these outcomes could be achieved without actually meeting real time. So not meeting real time is often not possible when we are globally distributed which of these outcomes can we achieve without meeting real time. And then again, a bit of counting. How many from this list can you identify that could be done without real time interaction? And mark this number. We have eight in total. Okay, let's count up from about five. Raise your hand if you are five or above with your counting of the outcomes. If you think five or more of these outcomes can be achieved with solo planning and great tools. Okay, I see a few hands. Okay, keep your hand up if six of these outcomes can be achieved. Okay, 
I think we have a lady in the back and a colleague in the front. Can we get your name so we go uh, meet you in the breaks, please? <laughs> I made a mistake. Ah, <laughs> the wrong way. <laughs> no problem. Can, we, uh, can I ask for your name? Yeah, Jordi. Jordi. Super. Let's all meet Jordi in the break. Uh, because I believe also it's about six or more of these outcomes can be achieved. That's how um, uh, the information was planted without compromising the outcome of what we intend to achieve. But it could be possible if needed, if we are a globally truly work from anywhere uh, distributed talent team or company, we could make it work for all on the list. And there are great examples available. Uh, on the internet and in our community that we can explore. So, let's define what is non-real-time interaction, asynchronous. Many of you are uh, e even using asynchronous communication today. It's when we send messages or create an interaction without expecting an immediate response. So, antithesis of this is sending a chat message and then immediately responding, or an email immediately responding, that's real-time communication. Asynchronous is when we send a paper or a message in a bottle, uh, put it on the sea, and someone at some point will read it and do something with it. Asynchronous. Okay? So um, what we invite you to do, and this can be an experiment loop that you can uh, use for your team, to start with those eight outcomes in the previous uh, slide, and start with an async interaction. Think about planning that interaction before needing a meeting. How could we plan and what inputs would we need to start async, start the interaction via other channels, then stay async for achieving the outcome, and only switch over to synchronous or real time if the following occurs. As you have started collaborating asynchronously, everyone in their own time contributing to an outcome, when you notice that now we need an immediate decision, the urgency goes up, or emotional conflicts or also positive emotions uh, happen, or celebrations would be beneficial, or a lot of complexity back and forth is occurring, then you may switch to actually needing a real-time meeting. And later in the deck at the end, I will share how we have placed some typical agile team meetings around this loop um, and how you could start experimenting with more async yourself. So async as a default needs um, effectively some planning and the most important practice will be the team agreements. So this we call a superpower. How many of you have team agreements already on your team? so that we can talk to more people in the break, not just Jordi, thank you so much. So you are on the right track. So extending the team agreements with use of time would be the additional idea here. How do we design for interaction? And how do we use the time? Okay, you will, if you are a, a Kanban person, you will notice that we start with defining what is our work? What is our workflow to get the work done? Who are our customers and what is the value? And then it's important to talk about uh, schedules and time expectations, particularly response time, simple practice to not needing to respond to emails unless they are from a specific group of stakeholders or customers to agree in your team that the response time of one day or even no response is acceptable to email. And technologies and boundaries of use uh, are very, very important. So starting to document this even in a wiki page could be a good uh, practice and really a superpower to incrementally improve. Some practices uh, I and my team have uh, experimented with one is blocking out focus time or meeting-free days. Uh, I already mentioned the NASA study. In one team, we have a meeting free Wednesday. It's a distributed team, but it works for the team because even though uh, ad hoc meetings are encouraged here, only urgent meetings. So this is a, a stress-free or a really, really much a creative or focused time day. Um, and it's in the middle of the week, so it feels a bit like the weekend. You can actually progress things and don't need to accumulate stress for the Friday to finish things. Um, before going home. Um, team workflow, uh, this is a very much a simplified uh, example, but single source of truth of where is the work and who is working on what. 
Uh, it's very important in online teams to document our work in context. And when we collaborate, uh, to have the context of what, uh, what is the work, what is its status, what has been already done, so the policies and done criteria, and also who has contributed to a decision so far. So having uh, a workflow and then to the card, some, some common stack tool, for example, a wiki, or some even Google Docs, some documentation attached, that, for example, here in a hiring process, when hiring employees remotely and not meeting even the team members, even the hiring managers don't meet themselves face to face, it's really helpful to have a very structured workflow, very clear policies and everything documented on the team. And in this team who um, has this practice in place, they also implemented uh, over time their own policies. For example, when you communicate with a candidate from your committed state, so the interviews are scheduled, then it will always be the same person as the single point of contact for your customer who is the future hire, uh, to have that uh, um, direct touch and, and continuity in the, in the contact with customer. Other teams call this the customer hero role, so you might want to distribute the workload of who is facing how many customers in your team and rotate that customer hero uh, role. So, the workflow uh, only will deliver benefits if you have the tooling agreed and as simple as possible and the communication happens in an asynchronous context, more in your own time, therefore more in writing not in real-time chatter or communication. So, how many of you recognize this or have as a, potentially a duck near your laptops if you were or are a developer? The practice of talking through your code or debugging it with, with a duck and later a colleague perhaps spare programming is really helpful to get clarity on your thoughts and ideas. So it's called the rubber duck debugging. An asynchronous team and distributed teams can benefit from this practice. So if you are not a developer yet, <laughs> then purchase a duck <laughs> or have a, a reminder, even a sticker near you to try to explain your ideas uh, and write them down or record them uh, for your remote team. And we will see some practices how we do that because it will help us create clarity and buy in before we even need a meeting. So how many of you recognize uh, that you have meetings about a meeting? You might have that in your team. So this example is when we have a meeting planned. It's actually a retreat, so it's a non-meeting. It's a lot of fun, like this conference. And when we are planning a team retreat on our team, we start to write it down and we collaborate on the document. Where do we want to go? What's the budget? What are the boundaries, the individual needs? And it creates transparency, it creates a consensus process unfolding from itself. Yes, we have a deadline, we want to go during late summer, so we want to commit to uh, agreeing uh, on options till then. So documenting, and it's called long form, form writing by Jason Fried, the CEO of Basecamp, documenting your thoughts on a wiki or on Google Docs or similar shared documents will help you get clarity and consensus in your teams. And you can take this forward. In one team, uh, we work with some colleagues, you can take this process then f forward to a decision-making process where this becomes a proposal and it's uh, either presented or again offline discussed for any objections and taken through a consent process. Another async example of documenting in context and sharing things without meetings could be product reviews or walkthroughs. These are great, uh, you can do them on a canvas, so silent reading, everyone in their own time and leaving comments uh, or voting on uh, ideas, options, and here we are looking through uh, some UI screens. And it's less, this talk is less about the tools, it's more about the practices. Uh, there are more and more tools like this, but if your team is not yet using visual canvases, then this could be something to experiment with. To take this one step further, you could already invite alpha beta users or customers to also take part in the commenting process. Again, you can uh, check how many comments are on the board. You can measure engagement by who is leaning in and commenting, and you don't need a meeting for this. 
And then combining the canvas and the writing with the video, the third superpower practice to again add to your workflow is wherever possible replace meetings with recorded videos. And here, for example, is uh, a team who is using stand-up uh, videos, everyone recording on their own time, what they have worked on, what concerts they have, or short questions. The key for these videos is to keep the videos very short. Um, we have uh, also worked through another example where a colleague submitted a longer proposal and the benefit of these video recording tools is that you can send comments and reactions to them. So again, you can start the thread of communication, improvement and decision making. So, celebrations. What are still some needs or remaining out of those eight, perhaps one or two, that might be good times for coming together and being together real time? I believe this conference is one. Uh, I think this is a celebration. And uh, I'm just lacking some fire <laughs> on the stage coming up. So I would like you to remember fire as a metaphor for when you might need some real time. Why? Because you would like to light the fire of people, people's hearts to make memories together, to um, decide together, to create momentum together. And that's fire. Okay, in some cases, there will be fire happening in itself. <laughs> you might need some fast decision making, so urgency or technical decision making. And also, if you see in your written communication or threads, preparations to, um, through async processes, that an issue comes coming up again and again, it's recurring, or it becomes emotional and people are getting stuck in a conflict, that's when you would like to come together real time, facilitate, resolve the issue. And I believe there will be a talk on one-on-one, -on -one, uh, one-on-ones, or perhaps already yesterday, we have a talk uh, in the program. And uh, one-on-ones are very interesting because I don't know about you, I have experimented with asynchronous one-on-ones with managers I work with, where we share in the same tool and we comment on each other's ideas. When we are uh, meeting regularly, otherwise, uh, sometimes real time, then we don't need another real time interaction. This asynchronous one on one works well. However, when it comes to coaching or just celebrating something or releasing an emotion, negative frustration or, or happy, then last minute we may decide to do that one on one face to face or real time. And those are options we have. Uh, so when there is fire or we would like to light the fire, uh, then come together real time. So think back uh, to the initial conversation you had. Hopefully at the beginning of this talk, you thought about some benefits of freeing up more time in your calendar, being more in control. I have chosen three to sum up. When we are more in control, we create focus and focus is what we actually strive for. We create this focus time, protect it, agree, when your team will have this focus time and make more of it in chunks, large enough chunks, usually half a day at least is needed per day. More inclusivity, this might be one of your reasons why uh, this direction resonates for you to fit your uh, work around your life, your personal situation and make the best life uh, that can work for you. And also for global teams, uh, this opens up possibilities to hire more people who would not have been able to join a very face-to-face, -face, very real-time culture. And last but not least, more transparency. Again, agile values are coming back. Workflows, policies, we love these. <laughs> Metrics, more information shared with more of us and more options to take part in the conversation. Okay, so um, this talk would or could have been acing, but I chose to be here to share the fire with you. So there is an invitation to join on Twitter an acing thread uh, till Friday, a conversation, uh, tag these people in. Um, I'm collaborating with uh, two more colleagues, acing crew and this, um, these practices I shared with you are stories that we are gathering and uh, sharing and uh, tag Lean Agile London 2020 uh, and keep in touch. And now we are open for questions. Thank you, everyone. Any?
if any synchronous questions. Yes, thank you. Uh, how would you define a meeting? Because you keep mentioning meeting, field meeting, and an ad hoc meeting, and a synchronous meeting. So I'm curious, what is your definition of meeting? A meeting is an interaction to achieve an intended outcome. So I would start using the word real-time meeting when we meet real-time. And the meeting or a gathering can happen also asynchronously. So change the definition is what I suggest or propose from a meeting is always must be real-time to a meeting being a process, a gathering, an interaction that starts with async with asynchronous collaboration. It's more inclusive, more transparent, allows more focus time for everyone to consider their inputs. And we might choose at the end to meet real time or not. Thank you for um, the clarifying question and hope we can agree to disagree, but hope it helps. Thank you, please. One faster. There is one in the back and then here. Um. <laughs> and we will have this short time. Yeah, just interested in terms of, um, do you feel there's a minimum amount of time you need to spend together as a, as a team mm. to keep that connection and keep that, um, yeah, being able to be open and frank with each other? Would you put a minimum on that or do you yes. think it flexes per team and there's things you'd look for within a team? Yes, uh, I do recommend to, um, to do uh, some exploration around the team's uh, motivators and personality profiles so the team's individual characteristics of what each individual need, needs. When you start your team agreement discussions, even before that, to raise more self-awareness in the team of who we are and how much interaction we need. Personally, I like to meet my team members once a year at least. And then when there is some conflict or some friction, even with just gathering with that specific colleague, if not the whole team can come together, really helps me because of my own personality needs. So understanding each other first and ourselves and then customizing the answer to that. Thank you. Do we have time? Hi. Hi. Um, so if we run an experiment to run more asynchronous meetings, how would we measure the success, do you think? Yes, yeah, so benchmarking the outcome. Um, you know, the meetings have a functional outcome, but also an emotional outcome. So you are currently doing those practices, um, doing brainstorming, doing hiring or interviews, and then using a agile skill set, applying a, a feedback loop, a retro or an evaluation of uh, both uh, checking in on emotional outcomes and needs, have the needs of participant been met, and have the needs of the business or the outcome business needs been met. So I would not do it with hard facts, more with a dialogue and retrospective feedback loop approach. Yes, Lars. Yeah, uh, I'm sure you've heard this before, right? Everyone's busy. In the, yes. a, in the async uh, meeting, in your experience, in your observation, yes. what have you seen with, with the way people make time? Do they actually make time to review this content? Because, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Absolutely depends a lot on the tools we choose and the team agreements we have. So often in many organizations, I see a fear, fear driven need for more meetings because information is not available, not shared, and people fear of missing out on that information. Therefore, they attend these long, boring meetings just to get access to information or visibility. Uh, so if we can replace that information sharing with better tools and then replace email, <laughs> especially CC'd email. So any non-customer facing communication should move off email as much as possible. And uh, when a call to action is needed from someone, agree in your team agreements who, whether you will be tagging people or who specifically will be needed, need to be highlighted. Everything else we should assume is not read. It's consumed on a need basis. Thank you. Very good question. Go on. Hello. Are you saying that the time box stays the same and everyone interacts at the same time? Yes, time boxing is very important. Later, if you watch the recording again on that hiring slide, in that team specific example, they committed to the, the lead time or the cycle time of the specific uh, column of uh, scheduling the first live or real time interview and completing the debriefing and the decision within one week. So they need to conduct the interview 
summarize and decide as a hiring team within one week. And that's a time box they use and it's done asynchronously apart from meeting the, the candidate for one hour. So, so how do you keep everyone, it's just to go to the same question, but how do yes. you keep everyone um, non-distracted? Yes, we still work in teams, it's a big assumption. So while uh, all this information might be accessible to the whole company, and people curious might read it just to listen into our team culture or learn from each other's processes and workflows. Transparency by default, but then who is part of our team, those boundaries, the clarity of who is on the team and who is a stakeholder need to be very clear. And who is on the team will be tagged or agreed how they will be notified based on team agreement. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Um, definitely meet Jordi, uh, who <laughs> is already <laughs> somewhere else in the break. Uh, meet each other on team agreements and continue the dialogue and let's create more freedom uh, in our schedules and more control. Thank you.